Greetings to you. Welcome to our Word to Trek Wednesday live midweek service broadcast. Let us pray. Let's get ready to hear what the Lord has prepared for us for today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your word is building us up. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that lives in us. We thank you that our hearts and minds are open, ready to hear the word, ready to welcome the word, ready to understand the word, ready to do the word without delay. Knowing fully well, you are more interested in our success than we could ever be. In Jesus' name, amen. It's a great day today and we continue in our series titled Do or Die. Today is part four in this series, Do or Die. And in Do or Die part three, we started focusing on the, on, on the, on the man of God, Samson, in the um, last week's editions. And we continue today and let's see how far we can go today. As we show, Do or Die. See, many times in life, you're going to be confronted with situations where, the, where you have to make decisions. It's a do or die situation. You make the right decision, you make progress. You make the wrong decision, you end up in failure or even death. So when you say do or die, you need to make right decisions in all circumstances. And by, the, by as we go through God's word, we learn how to make decisions in do or die situations. We learn from the successes and failures of other men and women of God and other people in the Bible. Do or die, it doesn't matter how challenging the situation is. Even if it's a hopeless situation, you can make a decision that will take you out of that situation. In some cases, you, go, you, go, you find that you are not supposed to fail or to perish, but because you made the wrong decisions, you end up in failure. So do or die, let us learn. So just by way of summary from last week, Wednesday, as we look at Samson, we found that Samson was born to, into a family as an only child. The mother had been barren and had failed to conceive for many years. And the father, the husband, never left his wife. He stuck with her through the challenging situations, right? And we also saw that, um, that the scripture reference for that is, is Judges chapter 13, verse 1 to 5. We won't read it, but just give you the reference. You can read it on your own. Um, we also saw that from the very beginning, Samson was dedicated unto the Lord and the spirit of the Lord will come upon him and empower him to do great works, great exploits. And the scripture reference for that is Judges chapter 13, verses 24 to 25. And that God had a specific mandate for Samson to deliver the children of Israel from the bondage, the oppression they were living under the Philistines. All right? And... Um, we also saw in Judges chapter 14, verses 1 to 5, that Samson was able to make the right decision and marry a woman in line with God's will. He married, God wanted him to marry a Philistine at that time, so he, he was guided by the Holy Spirit and he made the right decision. Though his parents thought it was a wrong decision, but he was also guided by the Holy Spirit. And it's very important. And we also saw in Judges chapter 14, verse 6, that Samson was able to kill a lion with his bare hands. The Holy Spirit came upon him and was able to kill a lion with his bare hands. But um, we also went into Judges chapter 15 from verse 1, and we, we covered today. We're going to pick it up from, from today. But just to highlight from you, Judges chapter 15, um, is that before God judged Judges chapter 15, in Judges chapter 14, um, Samson's wife betrayed him, and he was very angry. He had unholy anger. And unholy anger led him such a way. He was so angry. It was demonic anger. It led him to leave his wife. He did not want his wife anymore. He said some terrible words to his father-in-law and to his wife. And he made it clear. I mean, he hated her because she had betrayed him. So Samson had not, at that moment, he hated her and he left her. And his father-in-law who was so convinced that Samson so hated his wife, who was his daughter, and uh, his father-in-law gave her over to be someone else's wife. So she was married to a person who happened to have been Samson's, uh, Samson's friend. So it's very important for us to make sure that we don't let anger control us, unholy anger. Samson had unholy anger. It led him to abandon his wife and 
he certainly had wisdom now in Judges chapter 15, all right? You know, if you read the, um, from verse 1, the, the first uh, five verses, the Judges chapter 15 from verse 1 to about 4, 5, they, Samson came to his senses, he had come down and realized he wanted his wife back. Right, the wife had left, so he went to his father in law and told him that he wanted his wife back. And father in law told him, No, it's too late. The words you spoke in unholy anger made clear to his father that Samson was no longer interested. If his father in law concluded that Samson was no longer interested, so brothers and sisters, in the do or die situation, do not allow unholy anger to take over you. See, the Bible is clear that anger lives in the bosom of fools, so Samson acted like a fool. Even though he had the Spirit of the Lord come upon him many times and he did great exploits, anger, and only anger, made him behave as a fool. He abandoned his wife and he lost something that was good. So when he went back, it was too late. And his father told him, it's too late. And he said, I can give you uh, my, your, wife's other, your wife's sister to be your wife. And um, Samson was so angry that he couldn't get his wife back. And... Uh, um, he was so angry. Let's go to Judges chapter 15, verse 5. Let's see what he did. He was in such anger mode. You see, he's in a do or die situation. He feels like it's hopeless. But he's so angry. Demonic anger. Go to Judges 15, verse 5. We read this verse last week, but just to help to remind you. Judges 15, verse 5. I read you from the Empire Bible Classic. It's written. And when he had set the torches ablaze, he let... Maybe let's take from verse 4, Judges chapter, just give you a clarity, Judges chapter 15 from verse 4. So Samson went and caught 300 foxes or jackals and took torches and turning the foxes tail to tail, he put a torch between each pair of tails. Verse 5, and when he had set the torches ablaze, he let the foxes go into the standing grain of the Philistines. And he burned up the shocks and the standing grain along with the olive orchards. Now notice he's so angry, so he's burned the crops of the, of the Philistines. You see, the cruelty to tie the foxes by the tails, all right, and to burn them. So the foxes go and they destroy everything. The shocks and the standing grain along with the olive orchards. Verse 6. Then the Philistines said, Who has done this? And they were told it's Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he, the Timnite, has taken his Samson's wife and has given her to his companion. And the Philistines came up and burned her and her father with fire. Notice, so his wife was burned, her father was burned. All because Samson had executed vengeance. Uh, verse 7, see, verse 7, Judges 50, verse 7. And Samson said to them, if this is the way you act, surely I'll take revenge on you, and after that, I'll quit. So you see, Samson had executed vengeance on them, and now that they have, um, they have uh, killed his wife and uh, his father-in-law, he wants revenge. You see, all from a position where he got angry, he allowed unholy anger to take over him. He's lost his wife. He's lost his father-in-law. How sad. In a do or die situation, he allowed an only anger to take over him. Now, it's very important for you to understand when he tied the tails of the foxes. I mean, just to gather 300 foxes is a mission on its own. To tie their tails and to burn them is another mission on its own. But the Bible is clear. He did that. It was not as a result of the Spirit of the Lord being upon him. Because all other times he did things that aligned with God's will. The Bible is clear, said the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. So it is clear that the tying of the tails of the, of the foxes and the burning them and the tying of the crops was not of God. So who was responsible? Very simple. The unholy anger of Samson in a do or die situation, he made a wrong decision and Satan took that. The Bible tells us give no room to Satan. Samson gave room to Satan. Though some people might have wondered and said, wow, he's been able to bring the 300 foxes together and tie them up. This man is awesome. No, that is the wickedness of Satan. So you can see there that Samson, the one upon whom the Spirit of the Lord came upon to exploits, when he allowed, when he gave room to Satan, 
Satan took over and made him do crazy things which made him lose his wife and his father-in-law. Unholy anger. Satan lost what was of value to him. In a do-or-die situation, do not allow, do not give Satan any room at all. Think in line with God's word. Decide in line with God's word. Act in line with God's word. And we see that Satan, I'm sorry, Samson is a mindset of revenge. You see, which is so sad. So we'll go further and pick up from the last verses that we read last week Wednesday, which is Judges chapter 15. Um, we take from verse uh, 14. Judges chapter 15 from verse 14. And when he, that is Samson, when he came to Lehi, the Philistines came shouting to meet him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon Samson, and the ropes on his arms became as flax, and had caught fire, and his bones melted off his hands. Before this, they tied him up. They wanted to capture Samson, and they told them, if you tie me up, hey, then you get me. But uh, they tied him up, but see what happened here. His life is threatened, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him and gave him ability to break those ropes. All right? So the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. I would encourage you, you can go and watch the other series, I mean, the other teachings in Do or Die. That's Do or Die Part 1, 2, and 3. You can go to our YouTube channel. The link is kind of showing on your screen. And you can watch those other parts and get more information. Because the other verses I skipped, the information I left out. Because you need to move on to what we have for today. But you'll be able to catch on. So it says, And the ropes on his arms became as flax that had caught fire, and his bones melted off his hands. That was Judges 15, verse 14. And verse 15, it says, and he found that he, Samson, he found a mo still moist jawbone of a donkey and reached out and took it and slew 1,000 men with it. Verse 16. And Samson said, With the jawbone of a donkey, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of a donkey, I have slain 1,000 men. Verse 17. And when he stopped speaking, he cast the jawbone from his hand and that place was called Ramath, Ramath Lehi, the hill of the jawbone. Now, let's pause for a moment there. His life was threatened because he had been tied up. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him and gave him supernatural ability to take the jawbone, all right, the jawbone of a donkey. It was able to slaughter 1,000 1, men. But his words in verse 17, Judges 15, so in Judges 15, verse 16, show the mindset of Samson. Remember, he went with the mindset of vengeance to take revenge. So now that he has killed a thousand men with the jawbone of an ox, of, of a donkey, he said in verse 16, Judges 15, verse 16, and Samson said, With the jawbone of a donkey, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of a donkey, I have slain 1,000 men. Notice here, Samson is now saying he has slain. But he has slain these 1,000 men using the jawbone of a donkey because the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. The Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit gave him supernatural ability. The Holy Spirit gave him supernatural capacity. The Holy Spirit gave him supernatural efficiency. The Holy Spirit gave him supernatural might. He was able to kill 1,000 men with the jawbone of a donkey. He's supposed to be giving thanks to God. But because he's got the mentality of revenge, which was triggered by having been a person who had unholy anger, what does he do? He doesn't give credit to the Spirit of the Lord. He doesn't give credit to God. He takes credit for himself. Notice the word says, I, Samson, with the job of a donkey, heaps upon heaps, I have slain 1,000 men. He gives himself credit for slaying 1,000 men. Which school do you go to to learn to kill 1,000 men using the job of a donkey? Nowhere. Which military training unit teaches you how to kill enemies with the, with the job of a donkey? Nowhere. How do you know you can use the job of a donkey as a weapon to kill 1,000 enemy forces? How do you know? Only the Holy Spirit will give you that. So Samson knew he had to take the job of a donkey and notice here, it, the job of a donkey was made available unto him. We don't know how, but when the Spirit the Spirit of the, Lord, of the Lord came upon him. He directed him to pick up the right jawbone and also gave him capacity and strategy on what to do. 
So he was guided by the Spirit of the Lord. So in effect, it was the Spirit of the Lord that was appointing him, working, working in him and throughout him. So that was God working in him. But notice here, Samson takes credit for it. He says, I myself, I have slain a thousand men. Always testify. Always give God the glory. The Holy Spirit working in you makes you do exploits. But do not forget to thank God for it. You should have been thanking God for giving him capacity to do what he had done. But oh no. A mindset of revenge. Satan is taken off. So as far as he's concerned, I have, I have avenged my losses. I have equalized. He is very happy. In a do or die situation, always give God the glory. When God takes you out, give God the glory. So with that background, what happens? See in verse 17, when Samson stopped speaking, he did not even give any credit to God. When he stopped speaking, the Bible says in verse 17, he cast the jawbone from his hand. And that place was called Ramatlehi, the hill of the jawbone. He threw it away. You see, he's bouncing off. He's full of himself. I have done it. I'm Samson. I killed a thousand men. I have done it. It's me. <laughs> verse 18. Just verse 18. Samson was very thirsty and he prayed to the Lord and said, You have given this great deliverance by the hand of your servant. And now shall I die of thirst and fall to the hands of the uncircumcised. Notice here. Now Samson is thirsty. Earlier on, after the accomplishment, he gave God no glory. Now that he's thirsty and he has need for, for, it is need for, for water, he says, hang on, hang on. The president said, you have given this great deliverance. Now, because of the needs of his body, he is now remembers, oh, it's God. <laughs> it's God who gave me that deliverance. Because he has another need, he begins to remember God now. Too many people only remember God when they have a need. But when God gives them an ability and when they have a testimony, they don't remember God. They don't give thanks there. Samson was in a dual dry situation. God took him out, but he didn't give thanks. He threw the job on works away. And was now moved, continuing with his life. But now he was thirsty. Now he's thirsty. Oh, I have, th I have need for water. And there was no water around. He's very thirsty. There is no water around. He remembers, says, oh, God. And look, you know, he says, oh, God. You have given this grave driven by the hand of your servant. <laughs> and now shall I die of thirst? and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised. God responds to his request. Verse 19. And God split open the hollow place that was at lay, and water came out of it. And when he drank, his spirit returned, and he revived. Therefore the name of it was called Enhakol, the spring of him who prayed, which is at lay to this day. So he has water. He's revived. But notice a trend in Samson. His thirst is settled. He doesn't give thanks to God for it. <laughs> he doesn't give thanks. God split open a rock in front of him. Miraculous provision of water. He has to give test, he has to give thanks to God. He doesn't. He keeps quiet. He's satisfied physically. See, God has taken him out of that situation whereby he was so thirsty. He has met his need. He has a testimony but he doesn't testify. He doesn't give thanks unto God. It's very important. When God takes you out of any situation, give thanks unto God. But if you don't, it can become your habit. So Samson, you see, has got a habit now of not giving thanks to God. Though the water came out of a rock, <laughs> he doesn't give God thanks. What happens? Let's go to verse 20. And Samson judged defended Israel in the days of the Philistines 20 years. Notice here. After that, the children of Israel are taken out of the bondage of the Philistines. And Samson is their ruler for 20 years. He doesn't even give God thanks for making him the leader of the Israelites. Thanksgiving is not on his lips. But they were facing real challenges. He has, God said to his, to his mother, you sh I'll give you a son who would deliver the children from the, you, the Israelites from the hand of the Israelites. Who sorry, God told Samson's mother, 
I'll give you a son. And your son will deliver the Israelites from the oppression of the Philistines. Samson has accomplished that. After killing those 1,000 soldiers, he's gone forward. He's now his leader. He's king of Israel forward. For, he's leader forward for 20 years. The people are not in oppression of the Philistines. Samson has been promoted. But he, give no th he gives no thanks to God. He's enjoying. He believes his ability. Let's go to Judges chapter 16. That's what happens. Judges chapter 16. You see, he's already got a continuous bad habit <laughs> of not giving thanks to God. Give thanks to God in everything. You need to have a lifestyle of thanksgiving. See, in those 20 years he's leading, he's ruling, he doesn't, you know, he's, he's in control and he doesn't have any need to ask God for anything. Things are wonderful. The children of Israel are enjoying. <laughs> so the culture of Thanksgiving is not there. Why? It all started with the leaves, with Samson having unholy anger, giving room to Satan. Anger took over. It's a mind of vengeance. And even though the Lord is upon him, he doesn't give thanks to God. Do or die. Make up your mind to always give thanks unto God. You'll be launching yourself on the path of unending testimonies of God's goodness. The Bible even tells us in Psalm 100, you can read for yourself at home, that when it comes to the house of thanks, oh God, come with praise and joy, but it tells us, come with a thanksgiving offering. It's important to give thanks. Thanksgiving is very important. Even as you're watching us on this broadcast right now, give thanks. July is a month of thanksgiving. And indeed, in this month, we will, we will be giving thanks. Hello, it will be Thanksgiving Sunday, the following Sunday. We'll give you more information on the Sunday services. It's a, you need to give thanks. It's important. If you get into the habit of not giving thanks, you will give room to Satan, which ultimately leads you off the path of God. Let's continue. Let's see. Judges 16, verse 1. Then Samson went to Gaza and saw a harlot there. And went into her. Can you believe this? Samson, that mighty man, he goes to Gaza. <laughs> he sees a harlot, a prostitute, and he sleeps with her. He, he, he does not hesitate. Can you see the path he's on? He's, he's got no more reverential fear of God. After all, he's king. After all, he's leader. After all, he's defending Israel. After all, he's doing many great things. When the enemies are attacking them, he's protecting the children of Israel. He's leading them victoriously. Things are happening. He believes because of his own ability. And you see what happens. He, he believes in his own ability. That is the ability to lead Israel, the ability to protect Israel. He believes that it is his. He forgets that it's the spirit of the Lord that's upon him. And he gives no thanks. What does Satan do? Satan brings a woman into his path. A harlot, a prostitute, and he sleeps with her. Can you see? You can see Samson has got woman problems. Or not woman problems. He's got, you know, he's got no self-control. You see? Immorality on the rampage. He sleeps with the prostitute. That's the king. That's the leader. <laughs> the one who judged Israel. For 20 years. Verse 2, Judges 6, verse 2. The gathers were told, Samson has come here. So they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the gate of the city. They were quiet all night, saying, in the morning when it is light, we will kill him. Notice here, he has gone to a place he was not supposed to be at. He's in the company of someone he's not supposed to be with. And guess what? The Philistines have not forgotten what he did. They want to kill him. And not look at their intelligence situation. Look at the intelligence network. They were told that Samson is in Gaza. He's sleeping with a prostitute at this address, at this place. See how Satan and his, and his cause work. They want to destroy you everywhere. So, they were quiet all night saying, in the morning when it is light, we will kill him. So his life is in danger. They want to kill him. Verse 3, they want to kill him in the morning. 
All right? Verse 3, Judges 6, verse 3. But Samson lay until midnight, and then he arose and took hold of the doors of the city's gate and the two posts, and pulling them up, bar and all, he put them on his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that is before Hebron. <laughs> Can you see? They wanted to kill him in the morning. But he wakes up in the middle of the night. Who woke him up? The Spirit of the Lord was upon him again to protect his life. To protect his life. His life is protected. The Spirit of the Lord was upon him. What does he do? He gave him ability to lift up the gates. You see, his life is protected. You can say, oh, pastor, but he didn't say the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. No, this life, is the protection of his life can only be by the Spirit of the Lord. It's different from when he tied these fox tails and put a fire on them. That was not of God. But in this case, his life is protected. God protects life. Even though he's wrong, even though he's in the wrong place, he's immoral, he's fornicating, and do whatever he's doing. The Spirit of the Lord gives him ability to come out of there. He lifts the city gates. He lifts them and carries them to the top of the hill that is for Hebron. The Spirit of the Lord gives supernatural ability. But guess what? Samson is going to have room for giving thanks to God. <laughs> it's a do or die situation. And he gets ability and the strategy of how to come out of that place alive. Wake up. He's woken up at midnight. Because if the people had surrounded in the morning, there will be thousands of them. He might not be able to come out. So he says, wake up. Carry the gates. That brings so much fear to the enemy forces. It protects him. It brings so much fear. He, in the city gates those days, there were big gates, very big gates, heavy gates. So it's a terrifying experience to see him carry. Notice it says he carried them to the top of the hill. He carried the, single, the gates of the city single-handed to the top of the hill. The Spirit of the Lord gave him spiritual ability. His life is preserved. But again, it's a do-or-die situation for him. He doesn't give thanks to God. Verse 4, Genesis 60 verse 4, it says, After this, he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. <laughs> what is happening to him? He gives no thanks to God. He just lived the, with the, with the harlot. His life is preserved. What does he do next? He shifts to a woman called Delilah. <laughs> says he loved the woman called Delilah. In a do or die situation, he gives no thanks. What does he do? He goes deeper. He's got more woman problems. More carnality. Samson is carnal. Controlled by the flesh. He was controlled by the flesh. He slept with the Lord. Controlled by the flesh. <laughs> he sees Delilah. We will pick up this next week. You don't want to miss it. In a do or die situation, you should always have a mentality to give thanks unto the Lord. Samson did it. He's got serious woman problems now. We'll pick it up next week. Give thanks unto the Lord. Do not have unholy anger. Give thanks to God, even in the smallest of things, let it be your mentality. Give thanks, giving offerings, if it doesn't matter how small it is. It might be small in, in some people's eyes, but in God's eyes it's big. Give thanks at your level. It's time to give thanks. It's important to give thanks. The times we live in, we thank God. We thank Him. We are hid in Christ. We are protected. Coronavirus, COVID-19 shall not touch us. We continue to go forward. We give thanks to the Lord for being alive and making progress at such a time as this. We thank God. It's time to give thanks. And we continue to pray that the second wave that they are promised of coronavirus, that we cut off that wave in Jesus' name. We've got to pray and, and pray that the Spirit of the Lord, Spirit of the Lord, takes us, continue to take us forward. Those that are predicting the end, that want to stop us from the of God, will not succeed. We pray. Those that have been diagnosed with coronavirus and COVID-19, that they will be healed in Jesus' name. They will recover in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And maybe you are watching right now, 
and maybe you've been diagnosed positive with coronavirus or any other disease, in the name of Jesus, healing is yours. Fear not. The fact that you can hear me now means you are alive. Hallelujah. The same Holy Spirit that brought Christ out of the grave lives in you. You are alive. Your situation is lighter than Jesus' situation. So fear not. Fear not. If you fear, <laughs> you make fear a big problem for yourself. Refuse to fear. Fear. If you fear, you make fear a big problem for yourself. Feed on God's word. You will make it. This is July, our month of productivity. In 2020, our year of perfection. Hallelujah. We are going forward. The Church of Jesus Christ is marching on. We cannot fail. We're going to be defeated. We'll make progress. By the Spirit of the Lord, you are promoted. By the Spirit of the Lord, if you have no job, you are getting a job. By the Spirit of the Lord, you are creating jobs too. By the Spirit of the Lord, you'll have multiple streams of income. By the Spirit of the Lord, innovation is working in you. You are the light of this world, the sword of this world. You are the solutions providers. Together we are in Christ. Hallelujah. Do or die situations, we are the answers. We provide the solutions in Christ. We are going forward. You are the solutions provider in your world. Thank you for joining us. And if you're not born again, I'd encourage you to become born again so that you can hear God's word, understand it, and grow in grace and be able to make right decisions and make right decisions in all situations. You make right decisions in do or die situations. Hallelujah. You will make right decisions. Repeat these words after me and you'll be born again. Say, from today, Jesus is the Lord of my life. He died on the cross, was buried, and resurrected from the grave. He ascended to heaven, but he lives in me from this moment by the power of the Holy Spirit. With those words, my brother or sister, you are born again. Please get in touch with us. Our contact details are on your screens right now. Get in touch with us. Let us know that you've been born again in this program. Hallelujah. We would like to send you some information and help to guide you grow. And don't miss out on the programs that we've been giving, that we're giving every day. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We have a Boss of Wisdom 10-minute broadcast. It's from 6.30 p.m. to 6.40 p.m. on the same links that you're watching this program on right now. You watch it, you'll be mightily blessed. And on Sunday, we have... Uh, our Sunday service online on the same links from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. That is Johannesburg, South Africa time. Uh, on the same links, you're watching this program. Invite others to join us. Hallelujah. To so join us in the service. To join you as well in the service. Evangelize. Win souls. And also for those that will be joining us on site, um, we are still limited to 50 people only per, per, per service. If you're joining us on site, make sure that you're able to, you come in early enough to get in and even reserve your seat online as well. Make sure you come in, hallelujah, and we continue to grow. By the Spirit of the Lord, we will soon be meeting in our sanctuaries, marching forward, full force. We're already meeting in the sanctuary now in the limited numbers of 50, as the government is instructed. But by the, as we continue to pray, the doors are open. The toxic nonsense caused by the COVID-19 debacle cannot last. This pestilence is coming to pass. We cut it off in Jesus' name, hallelujah. And uh, God's glory shine more and more. I encourage you at this time, you should always give your offerings. Give your seed, sacrificial seed offerings as well. Give your tithes. You should always do that. God expects us to do that. If you look on your screens right now, you see our banking details. We encourage you to do electronic trial transfer, EFT transfers into our church bank account or do direct um, online giving right now on the screen on your link. We can do, it's a very secure link. You can give straight in into, into the account right now. It is very safe for you to use. It's a secure link. And um, if you're watching us and already born again, let us know as well how you've been blessed in these programs as well. Thank you so much. Let us share the grace. Let's get ready for the, ne for, for the next day. Hallelujah. Remember, Post of Wisdom tomorrow, 6.30 p.m. Hallelujah. St only for 10 minutes, 6.30 to 6.40 p.m. Join Space Africa time. Thank you so much for joining us today. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide in us now and forevermore. 
In Jesus' name, amen. And surely, goodness and mercy are our portion all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen.